Hi, welcome to the Adornet Studio. Today we have our friend Mallory Hutchison and she's going to show us a really fun, simple table runner made from fabric strips. And I absolutely love this, Mallory. So why Thank don't you, you tell us about why, or how you come up with this? Well, my mom wanted me to make her a table runner specifically for her table. So basically, we, I measured her table and she told me where, how she wanted it to lay out on the table. She also had a specific centerpiece that she wanted to sit in the middle. So we figured out how wide it needed to be for her table and her centerpiece and how long we needed it to be. And then we came here to adorn it and she picked out the fabric that she wanted and we went from there. I love the selection. I love how it's the creams and the grays. I just, I think it's so cute. And I love how you have, um, bound it in the green and then mm -hmm. you have on the other side, so it's double sided, the mm -hmm. red chevron. Yes. So with the green. So what does she use this side for? She wanted a, a side that was for Christmas, you know, more holiday exciting. So it's neutral on one side and then a little more bright and cheery on this side. That's such a fun idea. I absolutely love it. Okay, well why don't you go ahead and show us what to do. Okay, thank you. So you want to start out with picking your fabric that you want for your strips. I did um, a more bright and fun one with this, with this table runner. It's from the Wildflower Collection and the Chambray Collection here at Adorn It. Um, so this one's more neutral and then this one's just more fun. So there's so many options that you can do. I don't follow patterns. I'm not good at following directions. So I just kind of make it up as I go along. Like I said, we measure the table to see how it lays on the table. Um, these strips are four inches finished. So when I cut my strips, they're four and a half inches wide. And the table runner is 16 inches wide finished. So they, when I cut them, they're 16 and a half inches wide to allow for quarter inch seams all the way around. Um, I have some strips here. I'm going to show you how I sewed them with uh, the chaining method. It goes really fast um, and you can do this with these easy strips. It's a simple technique that we use. And again, I'm doing quarter inch seams. And I'm just going to sew straight down. And I have the right sides of the fabric together. And before this, I laid out the pattern of how I wanted the strips to go before I started sewing. So when this one is all the way through, I'm just going to grab my next one. I have the right sides together. I'll finish this one here and I just chain this one right through. And it makes for faster sewing. And then after you've chained, then it keeps the order of how you wanted the strips to go. So it's easy to lay it out again. And then you can just keep chaining until you've got the whole top sewn together. So I'm just going to do those two. And then I normally press, it's easier to press when you have smaller pieces like this. So now they're, they're kind of chained together so you know the order they're going to go in. Um, with this one I did kind of a darker and then a lighter and then a darker fabric and then a lighter fabric. When I press these seams, I like to press to the dark. So it's gonna, you're going to press your seam toward the darker fabric. Some people like to press them open. Um, sometimes the seam though can show through the lighter fabric. So I always do it towards the dark. So once you've chained all of your pieces, your top is going to look like this. And then I decided to do a point on this finished one. So I'm just going to show you how I measured the point and cut that. So 
So I measured in the middle, let's see this way. So my strip here is, since it's eight and a half inches wide, and the center is gonna, or sorry, 16 and a half inches wide, the center is going to be eight and a quarter. So I'm gonna just make a tiny little mark here. And then I'm gonna go down to the third strip and mark in the middle. And these, since they're sewn now, they're four inches wide. So make a mark two inches in the middle here and on this side. And then I'm just gonna line up my ruler with my cutter on those marks. Pull that away and do the other side. Match up the marks here for the point. So now you have a point that looks like this and you just do the same thing for the other side. When I was doing this one right here, I'll show you the points. Um, I just held it up like this to make sure that they matched. And if they don't match, just make it so they match. It's not a big deal. And that's how you'll do your point. So once your top is finished, um, you do your bottom. Pick whatever you want for the bottom. You can totally do something different so you can change it up. Um, if you're having it machine quilted, the machine quilters like it to be at least four inches, at least four inches wider than the top. Um, but I always like to make the bottom wider anyways because it's easier sewing. So this is what your top will look like when it's done. And I've done the back. I just did a fun chevron pattern on the back. So you can see here how I left the back and the batting wider still than the top. That's because when I sew on my binding, uh, then I know for sure that I, the back is catching and sewing straight and nice and flat. So I don't trim that until my binding is all the way sewn on. So with the binding piece, I'm going to show you how just to press the binding seams. I do my binding two and a half inches wide. Some people do them two, two and a quarter. I just do two and a half because I've sewn, sewn it too skinny before and it's really a pain. So I do two and a half just to make sure I have enough room. So I just have a bunch of strips of two and a half that I'm going to sew them together at a 45 degree angle. So it looks like this. And I just do that all the way along, sew them at a 45 degree angle. So now I'm going to trim these little pieces. And I just trim them a quarter inch from the seam. You can use scissors, but I just use a rotary cutter so it's nice and straight. So once you've trimmed all of your um, edges off, then we're gonna press. And when you're pressing this fabric, that's exactly what you're doing is you're pressing. You're not pulling on the fabric, you're not pushing hard with the iron, you're just pressing. We're gonna press the wrong sides together. And a little tip I learned a long time ago is you don't match the edges up exactly. You leave just a tiny little space. And then you're gonna press. You just hold it down and press it just like that. If you pull on the fabric, it's gonna stretch out the fabric a little bit and it won't lay as nice. The reason for leaving this little gap here 
is when I sew it, then I know the back of the binding is sewing as well with the top. So what, now that we've got our binding ready to go, all you're going to do is you're just going to lay it up flat with the edge of your top piece of the table runner and I sew quarter inch seams. So I'm just going to line it up here. And you just make sure it stays in line with the edge of the top of the fabric. So once I get to this angle here at the beginning of my point, I've made a mark a quarter inch down from the point. And that's where I'm going to stop. I'll show you in just a second. There we go. Then I lift up my presser foot and I turn it and I'm going to sew straight off the edge right into that corner there. Let me just show you that again. So this edge right here is what I'm talking about, this little corner piece. I measure a quarter of an inch up from that mark. I make a mark on my binding fabric. Once I get to that point, I just angle the fabric on the machine and sew it straight off into a diagonal, just like that. Once I do that, then I'm going to pull my binding back so then it's in line with my next row that I need to do. So I pull it back so this lump makes one line right here and then I'm going to fold it over and line it up again. And then I'm going to start sewing right here. I'm still doing a quarter inch seams. So I'm making sure it's lined up with this, the edge of my fabric. And once I get to the top point, I'm going to do exactly the same thing. Mark it a quarter inch from the top, from the top point, and then diagonal your fabric and sew it off the edge. I'm just going to use my rotary ruler here. There's my quarter. And I go a quarter inch from the tip of the fabric and make a little mark that I can see. So when I get there, I leave the needle down, lift up my presser foot, shift the fabric, and sew straight off the point. Pretty easy once you get used to it. The first time you might be a little confused, but just keep trying. So I'm going to turn, pull the binding back so it's in a line this way, if you can see that, a line right here. Fold it over. I want to keep that square right there. 
So I folded that over. And I'm gonna go back to sewing my quarter inch seams. And you just make sure it's in line. And you're gonna keep sewing the binding and you wanna leave about an eight inch tail so you don't sew the whole thing. So keep sewing until you have an eight inch tail. So now that we have the binding sewn on, I'm just gonna show you how I meet my two binding ends together. So you wanna leave a tail when you start the binding and also a tail when you finish the binding. Eight to 10 inches is fine. This one's a little bit shorter, but that's, that will still work. So this one is cut straight to this edge. This one, I'm gonna leave a two and a half inch tail so it's so they don't meet like this. You wanna leave the two and a half inches. The reason it's two and a half is because my binding strip was two and a half, so they have to match up. Then I lay this down here and I just took my iron and I pressed it so it, le it leaves a little seam for me to guide off of. So you can see that seam right there. And then I'm gonna get some pins. And I'm just gonna sew this how I did at the very beginning when I put my binding together. We're gonna do right sides together. And then I'm gonna pin this one in place. So it looks like that. So you have your, you're gonna do your 45 degree angle right here. So we'll take this to the machine. And we're still doing quarter inch seams. And I'm just sewing from point to point. Or sorry, you don't need a quarter inch seam for this because you're going right down the middle. I just wanna find my point so I know where my finish is going to be. And I just hang on to it. You can make a mark with a pencil just with your ruler so you can follow the line, but I do whatever is the fastest. So I don't use a pencil. So once I take my pins out, I pull that flat and it, it's a continuation. I have to cut this tail off. Just a quick trim, no big deal. There's some extra thread I'm gonna trim off. So I trim this off and now I'm gonna press it down. I'm gonna press my seam just to one side. And then just press your binding down again. And then you'll just finish sewing the rest of the binding on. And here's where you keep doing your quarter inch seams. And it will just sew nice and straight and then you won't even be able to tell where you stopped or started your binding. So now that you have the binding sewn on, you're just gonna trim off these edges that I left with the batting and the back of the fabric. 
just with your rotary co cutter, I'm just going to go right to the edge of the top piece of the fabric. Okay, so now that that's all trimmed out, on these points here, I'm just going to cut straight across so the binding will lay over a little bit nicer so it's not too bulky right there. Just like that on both ends. And now I'll show you how I get it ready for hand stitching. I use these cute hair clips that were popular like 12 years ago, the flippy ones. So I just find a starting point and I fold the fabric over the edge and these clips just hold it in place perfectly. You can use pins as well, but these, these work easier, I think. So I just keep clipping and then I start from here and I just hand stitch this on and I just get a thread that's close to the color of my binding because your thread will show so you want to get it as close to your binding color as you can. So now you're ready to start hand sewing and then you'll have a cute, fun, easy, quick table runner with Adornit fabric. Thank you for joining us at the Adornit studio today and we hope you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks!